Good words. Good words. It's always a way through. So I uh, won't ask for a show of hands, but uh, how many of you have ever actually followed through on a New Year's resolution? <laughs> it probably doesn't work real well. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know many that do. New Year's resolutions don't work in the, the way I know. But you can benefit from other people not following through on their New Year's resolutions. So about halfway through uh, a year, uh, many years ago, uh, I, uh, I decided I wanted to, to get a uh, get a Bowflex machine for the uh, for the basement, and uh, and so about June or July, looking on Craigslist, guess what? You get one for about third third of the price that the guy paid for it in his New Year's resolution. <laughs> so uh, uh, so we did, uh, and uh, and able to get that. We just we don't follow through. If you could if you could wave a magic wand and make a change in your life, what would you, what would you change? If you could just wave the wand, what would it be? Here in the fall, as we watch the change of seasons, it's a great time to think about what do I need to change? What can I change? What should I change? What should be going on in my world? that I want to be different. Because until we make different choices, guess what? Get the same thing that we've always gotten. Many people want the blessings of God in their life, but I find few people are really willing to pay the price to get those blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 30 gives us this promise and warning. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. I love that phrase. We'll come back to it. Not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven, so you have to, to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's a choice in life and God makes it pretty clear. I love that phrase, not, it's, this is not too difficult for you. It's not beyond your reach. I mean, how many times have you said to yourself, I know I've said it plenty of times, this following Jesus stuff can, get, can be hard. This is so difficult, Lord, to understand your will or to do this or to do that. And then I read Deuteronomy and I say, oh, maybe I'm making it more difficult than it is intended to be. I don't have to go to some other planet to find the secret of obedience. I, I don't have to dive to the depths of the ocean. I don't have to fly to another country. It's here and it's now because of my faith in Jesus. The ability to follow God is in my heart. It's right here at home. The problem is, here's how we make it difficult. We put our stuff into our lives. <laughs> we, we put our desires, our wants, our dreams, and they begin to supersede God's plans for us. 
And in the back of our minds, we're basically saying, I think, God, you might be missing something, so I need to take over. God's call on our lives is to love him, spelled out clearly at the all of Scripture. He, he spells it out twice for us, actually, just to make sure we won't miss it. And you've got some notes in your bulletin if you want to follow along and some blanks to fill in if you will like to do that. Love God. It says, walk in his ways, keep his commands. Now, he, those aren't two different things. He's saying the same thing. In the Hebrew, uh, in the original Hebrew of the Old Testament, the Hebrew thought process was, was this duality. They, they would say one thing, and then they'd find a different way to say the same thing just to make sure you got it. Walk in his ways and keep his commands. The way we say, I love God, is to follow what God says to do. We, our lives shout to the world around us, I love God, when we do what God calls us to do, when we live that kind of life. That's, and it turns out to be a different kind of life than the world around us. We don't have to shout, I love God. We let our lives shout, I love God. A study was released by Barna Research. Uh, George Barna is a Christian. Uh, is also a, a researcher, a marketing guy. He's done st work with IBM and, and Disney and, and a whole lot of, lot of huge companies, but does some stuff for, for churches. And several years ago, he uh, released a, a study looking at the difference claiming Christian faith made in the daily practice of Christians versus the daily practice of non-Christians. Are y'all sitting down? Christians were st statistically equivalent to those who didn't claim faith in Christ in their behaviors. Believers were just as likely to better gamble, to visit a pornographic website, to take something that did not belong to them, to consult a medium or a psychic, to physically fight or abuse someone, to have consumed enough alcohol to be considered legally drunk, to have used an illegal non-prescription drug, to have said something to someone that was not true, to have gotten back at someone for something he or she did, and to have said mean things behind another person's back. What difference does believing in Jesus make? Well, at least some research says no difference. The early church formed their, their life around the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And they found five basic practices that helped them do what Deuteronomy was calling them to do, to live this kind of life. These five practices shaped their hearts and provided boundaries to their lives and led them down a, the life path. They're five foundational practices. We took a look at these earlier in the year, and we're going to revisit them over the next several weeks. So for instance, next week, now we're going to look at the relationship piece, and my good friend, Dr. Jeff Baker, uh, is going to be here. He's a neuropsychologist. He's a brilliant guy and an expert on relationships. And we're going to have a little conversation about, about how we build and grow healthier relationships in our lives, be it friendships, marriage, parenting, uh, you name it. Um, you won't want to miss uh, next week with... Uh, well, I just, I just refer to him as Doc because uh, we have the same first name and we're only one letter off on, the, on that last name. Uh, but we, do look, uh, we don't look alike. He's about that tall. And he's a former boxer. So, uh. so here's the question for you. Where are you in these five practices? Now, these, these may be totally new to you. Maybe you weren't here in, in, for this series in the spring. Uh, maybe you were here and you're like several people that I've talked with who, you know, this really helped me. Kind of kind of was a, almost like a, a, a jet engine to get me moving in, in some different areas. And then the summer took over and, and now, now it's time to, time to get back to it. And, and, and maybe you're there. Where, where, where are you? So I'm going uh, to challenge you with some application 
questions and thoughts this morning. See, God doesn't care about where we've been or what we've done. He cares about what we're going to do today. What are we going to do from this point on? Here's where these five practices come out of. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So this first practice, scripture and prayer. I don't think you can talk about scripture without prayer and prayer without scripture. They go together. They're the foundation of the Christian faith. So many people are, are, well, I don't understand what I'm reading. And here's what I found. The more I read, the more I understand. <laughs> um, and, and then sometimes it's, well, I don't know where to start. And I always tell people, uh, you know, go to the Gospel of John, the fourth book in the New Testament, or go to the book of Romans and start there. Don't try to start in Genesis 1-1 and read all the way through because you'll get into the valley of the shadow of death in Leviticus and lose your way. Uh, and, 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 and it's just, you, just, you know, yeah, yeah, good stuff in Leviticus, but you don't want to try to, you don't want to try to do that uh, on your first run through. So it, it's good at some point to read through the Bible in a specified period of time. If you're going to try to read through the Bible in a year, just know it's a lot of reading every day. It's great, it's good, it's probably something that ought to be a goal for every follower of Jesus. And, and the YouVersion app that we'll refer to here in a minute gives you a plan to do that. And it'll keep you on track and, uh, and, and you can do it. And it's, and it's a great goal uh, and, and discipline to have at some point in our lives. In fact, I, let, me, let me just talk about the YouVersion app uh, a bit. Uh, many of you downloaded that, that app on your phones or iPads and, uh, in the spring and began using that. And I, and I love how, how it works. It, it, it helps keep you accountable. Uh, I, I got a, in fact, I got a, I got a little note uh, yesterday <laughs> that said, uh, hey, how can we help you catch up? on your reading. I'm like, oh. Um, and, uh, and, and so that's great. OK. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be able to, to, to do that. Um, I, I actually have two plans going right now. And one of them takes a whole lot more reading than another one. But uh, you, can, you can pick and choose. You can go with topics. You can, you know, if you don't know where to start or you've never made scripture reading a, a a usual part of your life, I just want to encourage you to go download that thing and, and, and start reading. Pick a plan and, and do it. There's, there's five day plans and seven day plans and one month plans and all, all of those different things. Begin, begin reading. And, and, then, and then combined with prayer, a prayer is the power plant of a Christian the power plant of a church. And I think if there's one place that we as a church can, can have the, the most increase in these practices, it's, it's prayer. We, we, we're good prayers, but we can be better prayers. Um, and so one of the things that we've signed up for uh, coming up next year and I don't know if it's going to be in the winter or the spring, is something called a Breakthrough Prayer Lab. Uh, I've been a Methodist pastor for 28 years and in the West Ohio Conference, which we're a part. And this is probably the best thing that I've seen come out of our conference. Um, it's going to, we're going to have some people come in. They're going to help us blowtorch prayer in our own lives and as a church. Uh, and so as we find out more about it and as we know what, what that's going to look like, you will begin to know. But let's begin praying for the breakthrough prayer that is going to happen in this place. I'm excited about what could happen. Every church that has participated in this has seen some breakthroughs. In fact, 
so significant that other conferences around the U.S. are asking the West Ohio people to help them implement it there. That's, that's always a good sign. So I'm excited about what can happen. We're going to learn how to deepen prayer together. So here, here's the application question. When and where will you pray and read scripture? What will you do? Where can you find 30 minutes a day? And sometimes you just need to ask the question, TV or Jesus? You know, just turn it off. Um, maybe you need to risk falling asleep or eating it <laughs> like Kevin. <laughs> you know, what, what do you need to do to, to spend some time reading God's Word. One of the reasons I love the YouVersion app is what's the first thing that probably everybody picks up when they wake up in the morning? Your phone. Glasses. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that too. We're grabbing our phones within the first few minutes of getting up. And if that YouVersion app is on there, there's a better chance you're going to read it when that happens. Where, where, where can you find a place? Uh, schedule it. Put it in your, in your calendar. Make up an alarm go off. Figure it out. Here's the second thing, relationships. Relationships are huge. Being in a relationship with other believers is vital to our spiritual growth because God designed us for community. God designed us to be in a relationship with people. And... and Small groups are a, are a big part of that. Uh, they're, they're an essential part of the fellowship and discipleship of the early church and in our day as well. In fact, early Methodism flourished because of their small groups. Right now, uh, around, around the park, we have two consistent small groups. One is the worship team because uh, they practice every week and we count them as a small group and then there's one other small group that's consistently going I'm praying for two more uh, that will begin happening I'm in some conversations with some people we're gonna see where some of that might go and and I just want to challenge you be a part of a small group and you're like but are you gonna make me talk are you gonna make me read are you gonna make me pray out loud uh, no um, in, in fact, try it out. Try, try a group out for, for four weeks, and if you don't like the people, find new people. Um, and, 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 you know, just figure it out. But being a part of a small group is the best way to grow your heart for Jesus, besides prayer and scripture. And so we're going we're gonna to hopefully roll out some new small groups here in the next couple of months. I hope that you'll make time for it. So here's the application question. What will you adjust to make a small group a priority for you? Most people want the blessings of God, but they're not willing to pay the price. Part of the price is scheduling it and keeping it. Third is worship. Lifestyle worship is what God is after. Not a moment of worship like Sunday morning but a lifestyle of worship. How can we make every word, every action, every part of our lives worshipful to God? Th these five practices aren't pick and choose. It's not multiple choice. Uh, the, the Christian life can't be lived without these things all happening. Prioritizing worship in today's world takes on a whole different viewpoint, a whole different approach than, than you know, even a decade ago and two decades ago. I know, I know when, when we were raising our kids and, and we had to make choices a lot of times about, no, Jesus is the priority. And, and, and we, I, I can't tell you how to do that, uh, for your situation, I can just tell you what we did. Uh, and and I, I, very pr I'm very proud of all three of our kids. There was, just, there was one thing that one of our kids did uh, that uh, uh, we were in a church that had Wednesday night small groups. And, uh, and, and she, would, she told her coach, she said, I've got to get out of swim practice early to go to small group Wednesday night. What's the coach going to say? 
<laughs> you know, he, he, he was actually very encouraging. And uh, I think when kids take a stand like that, it, it's, it's shouting, I love God, without having to say, I love God. It, 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 it makes a difference. So we got to make some choices, and we got to help our kids make some choices. How can you prioritize that kind of worship? What do you need to do to live in a life of worship every day at work, at home, at school? What do you need to do to live a life of worship? Here's number four, serving. The early church served the surrounding community. They realized that their Christian faith wasn't about them. The church exists to make a difference in the world and in people's lives. We do, we, we, we do this really well around the Park Church, really well. I rank us really high on this. We realize that we exist for people around us and not just in these four walls. Coming up in, uh, on October 9th, we're going to zero in on serving a bit. Our, our guest that morning is going to be uh, Bill Evans, who uh, works uh, full-time with OMS, One Mission Society, our international mission partner. And uh, he also heads up Men for Missions, which is the short-term mission sending group, which we go with you read more recently to Haiti, and we may return to Haiti uh, next year, or we may go, go elsewhere. He's going to share with us uh, after worship. Uh, we're going uh, to have lunch, just pizza and and, uh, and salad, and you need to let us know if you're going to stay for that so we have enough. Uh, and, um, um, and he's going to share with us things that are going on around the world where OMS is involved. And maybe we'll choose to go to one of those places, or maybe we'll choose to return to Haiti, uh, kind of where our heart is right now at this point. Uh, but uh, in fact, one of the most recent things that the OMS told me about, uh, we... Uh, Every, every December, we do a Live Simply project offering. Uh, live simply, live more simply so others might simply live. And the encouragement around Live Simply is, uh, is to reduce what we spend on Christmas, because we all already have too much anyways, and let's give that portion away to the poorest of the poor. And so we've really been doing that. And, and so, and OMS knows that. <laughs> and so they have come to me and said, hey, would you all consider this year uh, giving the, we, we send half, we keep half locally and we send half uh, internationally of that offering. Would you consider sending that half to help us buy Bibles for pastors in Cuba? And I'm like, well, can we go on a mission trip to Cuba to follow those Bibles? Was my first question, which I was told is actually still rather difficult even with the changes going on. And um, although I'm game. Uh, and, um, and, and what's going on in Cuba is that the pastors are having to say, hey, why don't you take the Gospel of John for this month and I'll take the Book of Romans. And so they're having to just divide up the Bibles, literally, and pass them around uh, that way. And so, and so Bill's going to tell us a little bit more about that. And, and we as a church may say, hey, that's where, that's where we need to go. Uh, and then again, we may say, you know, maybe we're going to go back to Haiti and we want those dollars to go there. It's going to go to something good regardless. Uh, that's, that's the whole point. I love how the Park Church serves. So what's God calling you? To do Where, where's God calling you to serve how will you begin to serve others in your just daily life are there ways you can make that happen are there are there times when you walk by a circumstance or a situation and it's just gonna take 30 seconds to stop are there things you can do what can go on it might be as simple as this. I think it's one of the most, the best things we could do as a church is when you're in a restaurant and, and any, or around here, I mean, you could do it anywhere, but, but I'm specifically thinking about Hamilton Township Police Department. You see Hamilton Township Police, pick up the bill. Tell them to leave a generous tip, but you pick up the bill for them. And uh, uh, this is something Stephanie and I do 
regularly and, and, just, and just go over to them and say, thanks for serving. We're, we're from the Park Church, and, and we're, uh, we're, we, just, we, we love what you guys do. We appreciate you guys, and especially in the climate of today's world, insane as it is. Maybe that's something, some way to serve, a simple way. Where, what's God calling you to do? And here's the fifth thing, generosity. The early church practiced generosity. I think we do this really well. Back to that Live Simply project offering. You guys respond to that because it, it makes sense. It's part of what God calls us to do. Here's the, here's the thing, though. What's God calling us to do next to live differently, to live more simply? Because you and I know that if we, if we just allow life to take its route, it will fill up. <laughs> and, and we won't get the important stuff in there first. If we'll get the important stuff in there first, then everything else we can fill in around it, whatever might fit. What, what do you need to do to live more simply? You know, we talk a lot around here about you know, do you need to drive a car for a few more years? Do you need to buy a used car instead of a new car when you're, when you're out? Do you need to stop using credit cards for a month just to, just to breathe and to see where, where you are? Um, do you need to begin to tithe, uh, giving 10% to the Lord? He, here, here's how I know this works. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of times the approach is, well, I'll, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm given, th and the average churchgoer doesn't really know what percentage they give, uh, the average churchgoer. Uh, and, and, you know, okay, I figure out I'm giving 4%, so I'll give 6% next year, and it never works that way. You, you just either start doing it or you, <laughs> or, or you don't catch up. And, and it's just, okay, God, here's, here's my commitment. Am I willing to pay the price to get the blessings of God. This is, this is Deuteronomy. You know what happens around Christmas time? We spend so much money that it takes us till March to catch up, to pay off the credit card bills. So live simply is, is just a practical thing, first of all, uh, but I think it's a Jesus thing as well. Generosity, generosity is about daily stewardship decisions that we make. Five foundational practices. Where are you with them? What will you do? How will you apply these to your life? What's God calling you to do? Pick, pick one. Don't try to do all five. <laughs> pick one. God, where are you calling me to move? Maybe it's that version app that you need to download and start reading. Maybe you need to find that place to serve. Maybe you need to begin, begin being better financial stewards. What is it for you? Where, where's your season of life right now that God can meet you in that place? Let's pray together. God, we are grateful that you do meet us, that you don't chastise us for where we are not but you encourage us from where we are. God, we ask you to help us today to grow hearts that are more like Christ. God, forgive us for going off on different paths and trying to do our own thing and still expecting your blessings to come our way. Help us, Lord for we cannot do it without you. And yet, we are, remind us that it's not too difficult because of Christ in us. In his name we pray. Amen. I'm going to take up an offering this morning. Uh, thanks for your generosity, which helps, uh, helps the Park Church uh, do what we do uh, in and around our community and our world. A couple of things are coming up. Jeff Baker going to be here on the 2nd, October 9th, One Mission Society. October 16th, we're going to have Hetty and Louis Britz. Uh, Hetty is a, an author. She's, uh, she's written a book called Unnatural Mom, uh, and uh, all about parenting and, and uh, great approach. They're from South Africa, just 
kind of serendipitous that, uh, that that I was able to connect with them. So we're excited uh, excited to have them there on the 16th. Doing a Bible study, Book of Acts, Wednesday nights, seven o'clock, right in this room, right up front here. Uh, love to have you be a part of that. Um, we're on YouTube. Uh, thanks to uh, some people working on uh, uh, video stuff for us. So uh, new person in charge of that this week.